This is a desert rattlesnake. When the sun is out, there is heat everywhere. But this crawling reptile has special adaptations. It is nocturnal. During the daytime, rattlesnakes stay in the cool underground burrows or in the shade to stay away from heat. They come out at night to hunt for food. Hi students and friends, welcome to the channel Learn and Teach by Sarayas. So we are doing the topic ecology and I'm already done with two videos. The book I'm following is International Lower Secondary Science Book 3 by Marshall Cavendish Education. So here's the learning outcome for this video lesson to recognize that different habitats support different organisms and that the distribution of organisms in different habitats is affected by environmental factors. To describe adaptations to living in a variety of habitats and how these help the organisms to survive. So mainly in this video, I'm going to talk about adaptations. Different habitats support different types of organisms and the population of all kinds of organisms is are greatly influenced by the surroundings or environment. Surrounding or environment comprises of both biotic and abiotic factors. I've already talked about biotic and abiotic factors in my last video. Biotic factors include all the living organisms. For instance, this is freshwater pond community. It comprises of microorganisms like bacteria, algae, and fungi. Plants like cattails, bur rushes, water, hyacinth, duckweed, boneweed, and eelgrass. Amphibians like frogs, newts, salamanders, and toads. Fishes like gar, shad, trout, bluegill, pike, minnow, perch, and bass. Birds like egret, heron, kingfisher, cormorant, duck, coo, swan, loon, ibis, and spoonbill. Mammals like beavers, river otters, muskrats, and minks. How are all these living organisms depend on each other for their survival in pond community? Microorganisms and plants are the producers in this community. All the organisms here depend either directly or indirectly on the producers. For instance, small fishes or organisms eat producers and then these organisms will be eaten by other consumers or predators. The other consumers are also known as predators. The consumer which feed on producers are not predator, they are prey. Aquatic animals also rely on plants for their oxygen supply. What does adaptation mean? Any alteration in the structure or part or function of an organism that helps them to survive in their current environment. So it's a kind of alteration in their structure, any part of the body or function of the organism that helps them to survive in the harsh environment. So these are the uh, diagrams or pictures of hydrangea. Many gardeners consider this plant to be the chameleon of the plant world. The reason is that because it can change the color of their flowers by adjusting the soil pH with the soil alterations. The hydrangea flowers turn to blue in more acidic soil and pink in alkaline soil. So this is a kind of adaptation by this organ. This is a plant usually found in desert it's known as cactus. A cactus has special adaptations in its roots, leaves, as well as stems, enabling it to thrive in the hot and dry environments like desert. The spines in cacti prevent excess evaporation of water, loss of excess water because, as we all know, there's scarcity of water in a desert. Additionally, the spines also trap air which restricts airflow and prevents evaporation. Another important function of these spines is that it collects dew during early morning fog. This water falls to the ground below and then absorbed by the plant. 
Cacti also have shallow and wide tough roots close to the surface to quickly absorb rainwater. Cacti have a waxy stem layer which covers most of the plant's surface except for the stomata. This helps the plant to avoid excess evaporation. In case of shuroi fruit, this shuroi fruit, there's a wing-like structure known as samaras. When samaras fall, it causes the seed and fruit to spin. A moderate wind can lift these spinning seeds, carrying them spinning in the breeze over wide distances. Now let's talk about shedding leaves. This usually happens uh, during uh, autumn or in winter in deciduous uh, trees. It means that the tree spends less energy through the harsh winter. It conserves moisture within the trunk and keeps it from drying out. It allows wind to blow through the branches, putting less strain on the tree, which is a serious concern in winter storms. Now, in this uh, slide, I'm going to talk about uh, behavioral adaptation. Uh, this is uh, practiced by birds. Birds migrate in order to get away from harsh climatic conditions like winter and more importantly for food and nesting locations. This bear seems to, sorry, this bear seems to be resting, but this is not the case. It is hibernating. During hibernation, animals go into sleep-like state and this happens during winter in order to save or conserve energy. During hibernation, the body temperature and metabolic, uh, metabolic rate also falls or decreases. Bears hibernate during winter, but they do, uh, they do not sleep uh, all the time. Hibernation for bears simply means they don't need to eat or drink and rarely urinate or defecate or not at all. There is strong evolutionary pressure for bears to stay in their dens during winter if there's little or no food available. This is the picture of polar bears. How do polar bears reduce the heat loss to the surroundings? Polar bears have a layer of blubber that can be up to 10 centimeter thick covered with another 15 centimeter of fur. The blubber is uh, simply the fat part and it's extremely well insulated. Insulated means uh, any material which is insulated means it does not allow the uh, uh, conduction of heat outside the surface. Polar bears also have black skin under their fur, which helps to trap heat. This is desert rattlesnake. This crawling reptile is nocturnal. Nocturnal means an organism which becomes active at night. During daytime, rattlesnake stay in the cool underground burrows or in the shade to protect itself from heat. It comes out at night to hunt for its food, which is its prey. Its prey uh, usually include uh, rats and other small rodents. This picture you see is of lungfish. During droughts, it astivates. Astivation means the organism becomes inactive or dormant during hot and dry seasonal period. So lungfish survive drought by burrowing into mud and secrete mucus. The mucus hardens into a protective shear shell around them. This is Pompeii worm and it lives at hydrothermal vents in the Pacific Ocean. Pompeii worm can only tolerate temperatures up to 55 degrees centigrade uh, degrees Celsius. And temperature at hydrothermal vents reaches to 80 centigrade. So how this Pompeii worm survive at this temperature? Because the worm has a fleece-like layer of bacteria which helps insulate the Pompeii worm from the extreme heat. Due to this reason, it is the most heat tolerant complex organism on Earth.
This is the picture of rat-tailed maggot. A remarkable feature of the rat-tailed maggot is its long breathing tube. This is a long breathing tube which allows it to breathe while submerged. The larva extends this tube to the water surface, ensuring a constant supply of air. This adaptation uh, by the rat-tailed maggot helps uh, uh, in the crucial situation like uh, uh, when it's uh, in polluted water. Because in polluted water, there's a less supply or very low level of oxygen. So the long breathing tube comes out of the polluted water and it helps in taking the oxygen from air. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. Give comments for more videos. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.